my team that we that is uh, named the hidden impact of diabetes on sexual function. So as you all know, and as we all been talking about uh, during all morning, type 2 diabetes is a chronic non-communicable -commun multi-system disease that has rich epidemic proportions. Chronic exposure to hyperglycemia affects the microvasculature, event eventually leading to diabetic nephropathy, retinopathy, neuropathy, with high impacts on the quality of life and overall life expectancy. Sexual dysfunction is an often overlooked microvascular complication of diabetes, not only type 2, but also type 1, with a complex pathogenesis originating from endothelial function and also from the dynamic of the vasculature. So current data on sexual dysfunction on diabetic women are less conclusive than in men due to the lack of studies of this subpopulation and the lack of standardized evaluation of sexual function in women. On the other hand, the male, the male sexual dysfunction is much more studied current days, so it has been reported to be a common complication of diabetes including abnorm abnormalities of org orgasmic and ejaculatory function and desire or libid in addiction to, pen to penile erection. So the prevalence of erectile dysfunction among diabetic men varies from 35 to 75%. Well, these are very, very significant numbers. Overall, many patients still do not willing willingly share the problems and written questions by healthcare prof professionals is an important part of the overall management because of the deleterious effect of sexual dysfunction on relationships, on self-esteem and on quality of life overall. So in order to do this study, we collect, uh, so the data from this work are nested from a larger epidemiologic pilot study, the bad luck. This is an observational cross-sectional study, and it is made from the study designed has a convenient sample of patients over 18 years old who attended to the health, the health center Quimbra Sul, which is located in a peri urban area of Coimbra. Coimbra is a city in the center of Portugal. So we collected this sample between April and August of 2022. From this sample of 131 individuals, 20 of them reported to have diabetes or prediabetes. And this uh, subsample was selected to do this, uh, the present work. So we did have a few exclusion criteria, and namely younger than 18 years old, illiteracy, absence of total autonomy, or refusal to participate in the study. So all the participants declared their verbal and written consent after a personalized contact from our investigation team. The participants answered a self completion structured questionnaire with optimal with optional anonymously because they could choose like yes i want my physician to see these results and to approach me accordingly or they could choose to answer it anonymous, anonymous, anonymously uh, while uh, waiting to enter for a medical appointment or after it. The questionnaires were available both in paper or digital format. So this is the design of the overall bed lab study. Initially, it is a questionnaire that is composed by the first part, which is the sociodemographic questionnaire. It included the social demographic data, life habits, previous history, namely hypertension, diabetes or prediabetes, mental illness, including anxiety and depression, bre breast tumor or tumor related to the feminine or masculine reproductive system. And all of this was self-reported, okay? Um, sometimes a few had a little help from the health professional only to 
only to reply to these socio-demographic questions, but overall the, the questionnaire were self-reported. Then initially we had a global sleep evaluation that was made by a Pittsburgh questionnaire, which is validated to the Portuguese population. And after it, we had a sexual function evaluation uh, that was different from male and female in some part. And on the other hand was similar. So it is divided with Initially, uh, we had some questions uh, that were about expectations regarding clinical communication in family medicine. Um, and then, uh, so, and then we had that were the same from male and female. And that then we had um, like questionnaires that were validated to the Portuguese population. For male, we had Massachusetts. General Hospital Sexual Function Questionnaire. And for women, we had the FSFI-6, that it, it's a short version of the FSFI-19 that is highly um, renowned in this area. And after this, we had, again, the same questions for both uh, genders that was regarding sexual experience expectations. So in this present work, we will be uh, um, describing the results from the validated questionnaire uh, for male and women. So this present study is only going to, uh, to be about this subsection, subsection of the study. So we did descriptive and interferential, inter interferential statistics were prepared using uh, Microsoft Excel and SPSS, and a descriptive analysis of the subsample was carried out according to gender and in global. Regarding the social demographic characteristics, here we have uh, a table one that can resume them all, but in general, overall, a total of 20 patients out of 131 patients self-reported pre-diabetes or diabetes mellitus. These 20 patients, uh, so from them, 10 were women and 11 were male, and they were analyzed in the present article. And the participants were between 37 and 78 years old, uh, with a mean of age of 63.89 years old. So basically, the majority of them um, only did not have a superior education. The majority were married or in a non-marital partnership, 90%. And also regarding the professional status, the majority were retired. So we can this, this go this also shows that this population was a little older. And uh, most of them uh, considered they lived in an urban environment. Okay, so regarding the diabetic population characteristics, among the 20 participants, 76.2 were uh, had a diagnosis of established diabetes mellitus, with one of them being gestational diabetes, and 23.8% had pre-diabetes. Pre From these patients, uh, uh 14 2.9 were medicated with metformin 19 percent with uh, uh, inhibit inhibitors of sglt2 and 95 percent were medicated with insulin the two comorbidities with higher prevalence between the diabetic patients were arterial hypertension with the prevalence of 71.4%, this very significant, and then also mental disorders. So regarding the results uh, of female sexual function, and this study intends more to be a description of the uh, sexual function behavior between the diabetics, so only five out of nine female patients answered the full uh, questionnaire because uh, two reported incomplete answers and one no sexual activity. 
So from these patients, 80% scored under uh, 26.55, which is considered to indicate the risk of sexual dysfunction. So when it comes to a detailed analysis, three of the domains presented an average score inferior to moderate. So basically this uh, score, FS, FI, so it, it is a score that it is very useful. It can be very useful in a clinical uh, practice because it uh, quickly evaluates the performance in the six domains of female sexual function, which are desire, arousal, lubrication, orgasm, satisfaction, pain or discomfort, and global score. So uh, basically, um, this uh, subsample of diabetic women, they showed that three of the, the domains presented an average score inferior to moderate, which were arousal, lubrification, and orgasm. Also, feeling pain or discomfort during the intercourse appears to, to the domain to raise less complaints among the patients. And on the other hand, arousal is a domain where patients presented more difficulty during the intercourse. Um, are these, uh, these uh, expected results or, or the, do they surprise you? Um, so here uh, we also have in these purple boxes the possible answers to the questions. For example, in the desire, they could, they could score their desire and they could consider it very high, high, moderate, low, very low or absent. Or if they had no sexual activity, they would score zero. So we also went to search for a correlation between these domains and diabetes. But of course, having in mind that we have a very short sample and probably uh, the correlation might be biased. However, through a Pearson's correlation, we found that lubrification showed a positive correlation with the presence of diabetes mellitus. Okay, so, yes. Um, we already explained this. And here, but here you have the mean, yes, we already explained this. Let's move on. And here, uh, regarding the male sexual function. So this is the, the questionnaire for the male sexual function uh, is also validated to the Portuguese population. And also um, is, we chose it because it is a very short and simple questionnaire that could also be easily applied to the to the um, to this population. And it is comprised by uh, five domains. So desire, arousal, orgasm, erection, and satisfaction. Actually, this same questionnaire as a simple version for a female sexual function, but uh, once the FSFI is so well-known and so global, we chose to use it for the female um, sector. So in these uh, domains, they could choose from, to score them from zero to, to seven, being four normal. And they would consider if any perimeter were below four, uh, meaning before, uh, below normal, they would consider the patient to have sexual dysfunction in this perimeter and also overall. So this is how they score. So sexual dysfunction is, cons uh, so we in this subsample, we had 62.5% of the participants fulfilling that requirement of having at least one item EL the score less than four. Overall desire, arousal, satisfaction were the domains more men presented scores under normal, while orgasm was the domain in which less men show difficulties. That was interesting to me, with only 25% reporting levels under normal. So overall, the mean of the five domains is located between three and four, which is a level corresponding to lower than normal. From all the domains, the domains overall satisfaction is the parameter where lower 
uh, man value. Through Pearson correlation, again, we went to search for Pearson correlation, but we are aware that these samples are very small and uh, the conclusions we can take from this correlation are very limited, but through Pearson's correlation, we can verify a negative correlation between the presence of diabetes and prediabetes and the lower self-reported levels of desire and arousal. On the other hand, levels of orgasm erection and overall satisfactions show no correlation to the presence of the disease. So from the results, it is highlighted that four out of five women, as well as five out of eight men have sexual dysfunction, which reveals that most of the participants feel an impact on sexuality. It was evident that women scored lower in various domains of sexuality. On the other hand, data on men indicate that the most affected domains of sexuality were erection and uh, orgasm, which is aligned with the microvasculature effects of diabetes that have already been described. Um, as most men and women have hypertension, this could also mean that this cardiovascular risk factor can also be implicated in sexual dysfunction. So this study had a few strengths, which are anonymity and lack of confrontation stress, the use of, of validated questionnaires, the use of a subpopulation of specific interest, and also the combined of several uh, data of interest that can uh, can later bring to very uh, lead to very interesting interested. I mean, I'm sorry, but I mean, uh, like we we were able to combine a very interesting uh, combi a combination of um, of areas that later, when we are able to collect uh, a bigger sample, can lead us to very interesting results. But it also had a quite few limitations and maybe some of them we will be able to correct when we applied this study in, on a bigger scale. So the sample size, obviously this is a pilot study and the choice of a, of a convenience sample, which might be associated with the selection bias, but in the primary care, it is actually what, make, what makes more, most sense and also the lack of data that could possibly relate the severity of the symptoms with possible anthropometric or biochemical parameters. So conclusions, clinical implications, and further research. This study showed that both diabetic men, men and women, for the most part, have their sex, sexuality affected often in several domains. The knowledge on how diabetic patients reach orgasm and the sexual domains that most impact their sex lives can be incorporated in the clinical work and guide physicians towards the specific needs of this population. Scaling up this study on the future can highlight possible determinants or cofactors to the presence of sexual dysfunction on diabetic population, especially if the field of female sexuality allowing the conclusions to be reproducible at a larger scale. And I hope you enjoyed it. You find it this you find this results interesting, and maybe I could have inspired you to take a little more interest. Uh, in the sexuality of your diabetic patients. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rita, for this interesting uh, presentation and topic. And I uh, wonder if you have any questions.